So, the risk factors, let's start down with the risk factor of acute kidney injury. Risk factor of acute kidney injury. Now, we need to know that what? We are going in this tutorial. We need to visualize the risk factors of acute kidney injury and the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of acute kidney injury. So, when we say pathogenesis, we mean that anything that is capable of the mechanism via which the cause can result to the disease. Is it clear? So, the pathogenesis of acute kidney injury, there are two major path there are three major pathogenesis of acute kidney injury the first pathogenesis which is in the middle is intrinsic is renal then you are going to have also pre-renal you are going to have pre-renal is it clear and then you have also post-renal is it clear so those are the three major pathogenesis via which you can have an acute kidney injury now let's start with pre-renal in pre-renal acute kidney injury, we have anything that is capable of reducing the blood volume. Is it clear? Now, the blood volume can be reduced either by the first element. It can be absolute reduction of it can be absolute reduction of the blood volume, or it can be it can be absolute reduction of blood volume, or it can be a relative reduction of blood volume. It is either absolute reduction of blood volume or you have a relative reduction of blood volume. Now, in the case of the absolute reduction of the blood volume, <coughs> you are going to have anything that can result to a complete loss of the blood volume. We have the first element is dehydration. That is the most common and the most important element inside the absolute reduction of blood volume, dehydration. And now, inside the radiation, now you can have risk factors on it, and the risk factors are anything that can result to excessive loss of the fluid. So, the thing that can result to excessive loss of fluid, we have diarrhea, you're going to have vomiting. Is it clear? So, if a patient has excessive diarrhea, vomiting, if a patient has excessive sweating, is it clear like in a case of or excessive uh, increased respiratory rate is it clear so all that are capable of resulting to dehydration and, and dehydration is going to result to a, a absolute reduction of the blood volume which is capable of resulting to a prenatal acute injury now the next element is going to be relative reduction of blood volume actually when we have a reduction relative hypovolemia a relative hypovolemia does there is not actually a, a reduction in the blood volume but in this case you are going to have a reduced renal blood perfusion though the the, the 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 volume of blood is constant you have a reduced renal blood perfusion though the volume of blood is constant so in this case what are the etiologies of this the first element you have heart failure so if you have heart failure it is capable of resulting to a relative hypovolemia the second element if you have liver cirrhosis is it clear liver cirrhosis associated with the liver failure where you have hypoalbuminemia in the case of a hypoalbuminemia you're going to have a low oncology pressure of blood and low oncology pressure of blood is also going to reduce the plasma volume though you have fluid inside the interstitial space and the intracellular space is it clear so that is the second element and now the third element you can have um, a key case of portal hypertension see liver cirrhosis with portal hypertension where you're going to have a pool of fluid inside the acidic fluid and then you're going to have a reduction of fluid in the systemic circulation is it clear so those are the relative causes of, uh, of the relative causes of um, of hypovolemia now after the relative causes you have also post renal acute kidney injury in the case of post renal acute kidney injury before we go on to visualize the etiology of post renal acute kidney injury we need to know that what you need to know that 
actually for you to have acute kidney injury you must have actually you must have first the loss of the whole at least 90 percent of the glomerular functions and you have at least 90 percent of nephron function before you talk about acute kidney injury and acute kidney injury does not only affect one kidney for you to have the clinical presentation of acute kidney injury that is seen on the cardiac classification with a a decrease in urine output of less than 0.5 mL per minutes per for 0.5 mL per kilogram per hour within the first six hours. For you to have that category classification, you should have and you should have both kidneys that are filled. And in both kidneys, all of them it is so it should be at least 90 nephrons which are failing. Is it clear for you to have the manifestation of acute kidney injury? So it means that what? In order for you to have the risk factors of post renal, you need to understand the urine, the urinary tract. So let's say that this is your urinary tract like this with the bladder, the two ureter. This is the bladder, the ureter, and then you have the urethra down. Is it clear? Now we need to know that what the kidneys are up here. So these are both kidneys up here. Are you understanding? Now we need to point out the fact that what for you to have a post renal, you are going to have a, an obstruction here. If you have an obstruction only at this point, you see that this kidney is not going to function, but this kidney functions. It means that you have only 50% loss of the of nephron function, and this other 50% function is going to be preserved. So it's not going to be visualized as an kidney injury. Are you understanding? So now, what you're going to do, you have to understand is that what it is only when both of these nephrons are, both of these ureters are going to be obstructed, or both of these pelvis are going to be obstructed before that you can speak of a at an kidney injury. So you have to say that what the risk factor of post renal kidney injury is a bilateral pelvic a bilateral renal pelvis obstruction that's the first point or a bivat the bilateral ureteral obstruction that's the second risk factor is it clear and that obstruction can be through a blood clot or the obstruction can be through a, u a, a urinary stone is it clear or the obstruction may be due to a malignancy like a urote a, a <coughs> A urinary tract tumor, a urinary tract carcinoma, is it clear? So those are the different things that you have to point out. Now, the next element that you have to visualize now is uh, at the level of the bladder. If you have obstruction at the level of the bladder outlet, you see that it is both kidneys that is going to have uh, accumulation of fluid and loss of functions. Is it clear? So it means that in this case, when you have an obstruction down here, so we have a, the next point is a bladder outlet obstruction. Is it clear? So if I have a bladder outlet obstruction, it's also going to present with um, this other one. And then the last one now, we have uh, a urethral obstruction. Now, this all these obstruction symptoms, you're not going to visualize it in, or we are not going to visualize it in um, 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 internal medicine, that's in nephrology, but you're going to much more visualize that in urology when you're going to see the surgery tutorials. This is not the chapter of today. Is it clear? So we are not going to visualize it here. So for this, uh, this is the first part of the tutorial that we wanted to bring about so that you know well what is pre-renal and the renal. Now the next, the next part of the tutorial is going to be much more focused on the intrinsic pathogenesis of the renal failure. Are you understanding?